My name is Wallace Jeffs. I am a half-brother of Warren Jeffs. Nevada police have arrested fugitive polygamous leader Warren Jeffs. I was born and raised in this criminal organization. Some call it a church, I call it a criminal organization. The FBI confirms the FLDS leader was taken into custody. He's been on the FBI's 10 most wanted list since May. The FLDS is called the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saint Church. They believe that if you don't live polygamy or plural marriage, you cannot attain salvation. My father, Ruland Jeffs, was the prophet of the church beginning in 1986 until he died. My mother was his fourth wife of 85 that he had before he died. This is the big house my father built back in 69 where we all moved together. I lived with Warren and 50 other brothers and sisters with eight mothers. I'm sure everybody thought it was pretty normal family, but it was anything but normal. Nobody would have known what was really going on in here, especially with Warren. prophet was a huge deal you're expected to live a very clean wholesome pure life my father he said Warren is a very special person he was brought here for a very specific reason by God and you are expected to revere him my father told me that Warren would be the next prophet he was the example to follow. But yet I knew he was. I knew he was doing wrong things. I could see it. I saw him doing wrong things. When we were living together in the big home, we had fruit trees. And my father had made a decree that we didn't pick any fruit off the trees. We could have them if they fell on the ground, but we couldn't pick them. But Warren would do it. We saw him do it many times. He did it with us. And whenever we did it, he would hurry up and eat his apple, run and tell my dad, and my dad would punish us. But Warren would never get punished for it. I would tell on him, but nothing ever happened. We would tell, and they would just say, forget about it. Don't worry about it. I'll handle it. But I never saw him ever get punished for anything he did, ever. He could do no wrong. It was one summer, I was 14 years old. We were told to put a fence around the compound. My father told all of us sons to work on building this fence. And he chose Warren to be the foreman of it or the leader of it. He loved that power and he loved that authority, but he took it to another level. I remember I was nailing some boards up to the fence and Warren came over and said, you're doing it wrong. You're putting the nails in the wrong angle. I'm doing it exactly the way you told me to do it. He says, you screwed this up. And I'm going to beat the out of you. And I remember he just came running at me. And he started kicking me. Just kicking and kicking kicking me while I was down. You're lazy. You're stupid. Um, you can't do anything right. And just basically kick the out of me. I 
I felt belittled and worthless. This fence was supposed to keep evil out from our home. Little did they know there was more evil in the home than out of it. Warren was made principal of the school at 17, and that's where he really started to gain power. Life was very shocked. I thought, why in the world would they choose a 17-year-old boy to be the principal of a school? And the only answer I got was that he was put there because he was this chosen vessel. I hated school because Warren was so iron-handed. He ran the school very authoritatively. He wanted everybody to know things were going to be done his way. He came up with a dress code that all of the students had to adhere to. And one of them was nothing flashy. I had a girl I liked in school and I wanted to be flashy to her, so I went and got a yellow shirt. I just thought I was this, this, this stuff, you know. And he said, what are you doing? Where'd you get that shirt? You know that's wrong, right? You uh, know the rule about flashy clothes. I said, yeah. He said, take it off. I said, no, I won't. He said, take it off. I said, no, I won't. and started whipping me with it. Yelling and screaming, saying what an evil, wicked boy I was. I was going to go to hell. Just made a fool out of me. He had full authority to do whatever he wanted in the school, and nobody really questioned him because we weren't supposed to. Warren became very, very popular and very, very influential with the people. He was teaching their children, and the children looked up to him. This is the beginning of his, his reign of terror. This is where it all started. kids he did this to. I don't know. But I do know that day I saw him for what he really was and he was a monster.
this is our yearbook. You know, I really looked forward to getting these every year because of all the memories that was created in that school. It's supposed to be a book full of happy memories, but for me, it's a book full of pain. Right there, there I am in first grade. Just a little boy that... <sighs> with a smile on his face, but that's not the truth. how 
we can grow closer to him. When Warren took over, I was overwhelmed with fear for the church. He had free reigns to do whatever he felt. I knew things were not going to go well. And it was a foreboding feeling of disaster. He started telling the people that media had to be cut out. Outside influences have been plaguing this church. People can no longer watch TV, no longer listen to the radio. He called the media Satan's tool to deceive people. We were no longer allowed to have any affiliation with the color red. The color red represents Satan. He stated that the people were required to remove anything from their home that was in the image of something other than God, meaning paintings, pictures on the wall, children's toys were part of this. This is all connected to idolatry, and you have all been sucked into the worship and honor of idols. Warren said, Nothing else should be important to you other than me. Obedience to the prophet was number one, the most important thing. If he directed anything and you didn't obey, you were damned. And I told everyone to go to their rooms and pull out any idol so I could discard it. After they did it, I started going to everybody's rooms to see if they'd given me everything they had. And one of my sons had a model car that he had built. And I saw the model car still sitting on his nightstand. And I called him in, I says, what about that? We know that whatever the prophet says, we must do. He said, Father, I can't get rid of that. I put so much time and effort into that. It's too important to me. Why can't I keep it? And I said, well, we have to obey the prophet. The prophet's word is more important than any idol. He sat on his bed and just started to cry. But I took it and uh, I threw it away. father died Warren got up and the first thing he said is leave my father's wives alone that's all he said and I remember thinking why would you say that nobody was after my father's wives I never suspected that he would marry them but he started marrying them within two weeks after my father's death. My father had 85 wives when he passed. At least 50 Warren took to himself as wives. When we're together, the Lord is with us. It was against everything we were taught that a son does not marry his mother's. Thank you. 
God says you're unworthy, so you need to leave your family and leave town. When Warren would expel a man, he was to leave town immediately. He was told not to contact his family. Warren would then reassign his wives to other men. He would just say, you belong to this man, and he would give that woman to that man. And it's just devastating. It's absolutely devastating to the children. It's devastating to the wives. But because he's the prophet, you don't question it. I didn't leave because if I did, I would have lost my family. My family was still loyal to the church because I had taught them to be. If I would have tried to take them out of the church, they would have told me, no, we're not gonna go with you. And I didn't wanna lose my family. afraid to turn my back on something that I've known my whole life. I believed that the teachings of the church were true. I believed those were true. What I didn't believe was Warren. But I had to follow his rules. If I didn't, then I couldn't be a part of the church. This was the beginning of the end of my family. I vowed inside that I would do everything in my power to make sure he is stopped, that this monster is put away. As a man in the church, you don't get to choose your family. You're given your family by the prophet. The prophet has the authority to remove that family as well as give them to you. And Warren would just expel anybody at any time for no reason. So a man is always living in fear that you have to be perfect or you could lose your family. This is my family. This is my two wives and most of my family. This was a very happy time for me. I had it all going for me at this point. But this is about the time things turned with Warren. This was the beginning of the end of my family. November of 2005 and I got a call on my cell phone from the bishop he said I have a message for you from the prophet Warren I want to come and deliver it to you personally I said okay immediately I felt this sick feeling in the pit of my stomach I knew something was bad the bishop came in pulled out this paper and read what they call the revelation from Warren. I, the Lord, am displeased with my servant Wallace Jeffs. Saying that I was not worthy of living in the church. I had committed some sin, but they didn't tell me what. And that I was to gather up my first wife and her children, leave town and repent. Wallace's second wife, and all her children. My second wife and her family were to go live with her father. I knew at that point Warren had expelled me from the church so that he could take my second wife, Amy, to be his wife. He had wanted her since she was in school when he was the principal. Once he became the prophet, he now had the power to take my wife away and take her to himself. I thought about refusing to leave. I actually thought about it. But 
If I had done that, I would have been evicted from my home. They owned the town, so they had the right to evict you and remove you, and they would do whatever they had to to get you out of town. You didn't have a choice. And I said, okay, I will comply. After they gave me the edict, I gathered my family together. Both my wives and all of my children were there. Don't worry. It won't last long. And I started to cry and I said I would do everything I could to get back so that we could be a family again. Trust me. I will fix this. I hugged every one of my children and wives. I said I was sorry. About an hour later, Amy's brothers came and they took her. said, absolutely not, you're not going to do this, you're not going to take away my family, but I'm going to take my family with me and we're going to go ahead and leave the church. It was the hardest adjustment I've ever had to go through, trying to undo a lifetime of preachings and have to literally step outside into a world that is completely foreign to me. I'm literally walking away from everything I've ever known. inside of him that he thought he was the only one it hurt me so bad inside I felt like you know if he's gonna open up his heart to me I felt safe that I could open up mine to him I said that happened to me too and we sat there and just held each other and cried <laughs> my parents one day and they get a phone call my brother's wife's screaming and my brother had shot himself in the head I made that decision right then and there that the pain <sighs> for Warren to do something so awful Never in my life ever let anybody do, let him do that to anybody else. I vowed inside that I would do everything in my power to make sure he is stopped, that this monster is put away. This was the hardest thing that I had ever done to publicly speak out about something that hurt me so bad that hurt my brother so bad but stopping this monster is all I cared about Warren never showed up to court and by default I won high noon in Colorado City long kept secrets of America's largest polygamous community are coming to light after my lawsuit, several others had finally gotten up enough courage to speak out against him. We need your help and support. 
to help stop Warren S. Jeffs from destroying families. He decides who you will marry, when you will marry, um, which wives go with which, how many wives everyone gets. But I felt happy that I wasn't the only one standing alone going after him, but Warren denied everything to his people. He didn't want him to believe that he was this monster. He went on the run. The FBI put him on the most wanted list because of an allegation of a 12-year-old girl that had been married underage to a man in the church. This was the catalyst for Warren's undoing. sheriff's office and the marshal's office were all surrounding me. It didn't matter what they said, I was not going to be swayed. There's no way he was going to do that to my children. church was next to God and we had to obey him and I believe that he thought no matter what he did it was God's will and he could get away with it as we first reported in our seven o'clock hour Nevada police have arrested fugitive polygamous leader Warren Jeffs the FBI confirms the FLDS leader was taken into custody after he and two other people were pulled over late Monday by a Nevada Highway Patrol trooper on I-15. I saw that Warren, on the run, had finally been caught. Authorities think that he arranged marriages between older men and underage girls. I was absolutely shocked. I was beside myself. I cried for a while, actually. Tears of happiness, tears of relief. It was a miracle. I was elated. I was like, this is exactly what I wanted to hear. After Warren's arrest, they had a ton of evidence that would now expose the true Warren. He was stealing money. He had child pornography on his laptop. And he was having group sex with underage girls. It felt like almost a million pounds had been lifted off me to know that he was going to prison. The people of the church don't know anything about his crimes. Most of them do not even know why Warren is in prison. They don't get to look at the internet. They don't get to look at papers. They don't watch TV. They don't listen to radio. They hear rumors. But the leaders of the church tell them that if they believe any of the rumors, that they will be expelled. So Warren's power from prison was just as great as before. He would make a written statement or a revelation that he would give to the bishop, and the bishop would then give it to the people in Sunday meeting. Revelation of the Lord, given to Warren S. Jeffs. Warren came forth with a revelation that he was undoing all marriages of the people of the church, that they could not have sex anymore, and that nobody had the right to procreate or bring forth children. All marital unions are hereby dissolved. There were 15 men selected by God and himself that were deemed seed bearers and that at Warren's direction these men would impregnate whatever woman he chose them to impregnate. These men will be chosen by the prophet. I knew that Warren was capable of doing that to my daughters, that he could have assigned my daughters to men and those men would rape them. Even from prison, all he had to do was make a phone call or send a message, and it would have happened. And 
when I learned that, that's when I said, no, not my girls. It's not going to happen to my girls. My sons, who were faithful, came out to talk to me. I told my sons that I was here to get my underage children, that I was going to take them away and take them home with me. They said, they don't want to go with you. I said, well, that doesn't matter. I'm going to protect my children. Go get them. They tried to convince me not to do it, to allow the children to stay. Finally, they were my daughters. They were all crying. They said, you are not our father. You do not have the right to take us. We do not want to go. And my family was still loyal to Warren. I had taught them their whole life to be loyal to this church. I had taught them that. And I finally said, we've got to go now. Let's go. I brought my daughters home, but they would not talk to me. Please, look at me, girls. I would try to talk to them about Warren and Warren's crimes. They would literally put their fingers in their ears so they didn't have to hear it. They refused to look at me in the eye. months after I got them. One Sunday, a friend of mine came over and I talked to the girls. I said, hey, we're going to go to the park and throw the frisbee. You want to come? And for the first time, they actually looked me in the eye. And then all of a sudden, they said, yeah, maybe we do. So they came with me and we went to the park and threw the frisbee. That was, that was the first time I thought, well, there's hope. I have a total of 20 children by the two wives. Five of my children are still in the church. They are adults. All I can do is hope they somehow find out the truth and come out on their own. My oldest boy in this picture hates me. He's still in the church. And to think of the memories we had together that were good. that he one time adored me and now he hates me. That hurts. I still have one brother and one sister down in Colorado City. I haven't seen them in 10, 12 years. I, I have no idea what's going on with them. They still believe in war and they still follow him and everything. I guess they just don't fully understand what he's capable of and what he still continues to do. I want people to know that Warren is a monster. It's my turn to speak for those who cannot speak. Speak for those children who cannot speak. Speak for the women who are afraid. Speak for the people who are afraid full of fear. We all have power within ourselves to stand up for ourselves and stand up for those who hurt us. If anyone out there, if you feel hurt, if you can't speak, if you feel like you can't say anything for what's happened to you, I want you to know that it's okay. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to come forward. It's okay. <laughs>